So, asteroid mining. Sounds like the perfect fix to an ever-increasing issue of the dwindling resources on Earth. The idea that near-unlimited resources can be found in space is certainly an enticing one. Some claim that it will be the first quadrillion or quintillion dollar industry, but asteroid mining is a little more difficult than simply drilling holes into a few asteroids. It certainly is possible, but today we're going to dive into just how feasible it is. There are two problems with asteroid mining, the technical side of the physics and the economic side. Let's first take a look at the physics side. To understand why asteroid mining isn't worth it, we need to take a look at how planets are formed. The planets in our solar system were created from a disk of rock and gas originally orbiting the sun. As the particles collided, they began to stick together and eventually became planets. The reason that gas giants are farther from the sun and rocky planets are closer is because of the density of the materials. The solar wind blew away the lighter elements, like hydrogen and helium, while the heavier elements that make up Earth today weren't blown as far. If you take a look at the periodic table, it is mainly the heavier elements that we are after. It would make sense that Earth, being the largest rocky planet within 4.3 light years of the solar system, would have an enormous amount of resources. All the matter in the asteroid belt only constitutes about 4% of the moon's mass, and the moon is only 1.2% of the Earth's mass. The magnitude of the resources that can be extracted from Earth dwarf the resources that can be extracted from asteroids. The main exceptions to this are gold, platinum, and palladium, which, due to their affinity for iron, sunk into the Earth's core during the formation of Earth, leaving relatively little in the crust. Another large issue is power. Most often, the resources won't be directly at the surface of the asteroid, so some degree of mining will be required. This in turn requires a huge amount of energy to sustain the mechanisms to do so, namely the drill. The space station has 3,250 square meters of solar panels to produce, at its peak, 120 kilowatts of electricity. A similar size setup would be needed to power such a drill, which adds to the bulk and weight of such a vehicle. To make mining the asteroid easier, some suggest moving it into the orbit of the moon. Let's take a look at hypothetically moving an asteroid with a 10 meter radius. This means it would have an approximate volume of 4,188 meters cubed. There are three types of asteroids, carbonaceous, silicous, and metallic. Since carbon and silica are vastly abundant on Earth, we are after the metallic variant, which has an approximate density of 5,320 kilograms per meter cubed. This means it would have an estimated mass of 22 million kilograms. Accelerating that mass to a typical cruising speed of 26,000 kilometers per hour over a long period of time, such as 30 days, would take over 600 times as much energy as it took to launch a fully loaded Saturn V. Without some sort of large-scale fuel production, moving the asteroids is definitely not an option. Now let's take a look at the economic side of asteroid mining. As of now, SpaceX can launch one kilogram into space for $2,720. Therefore, getting the several tons of equipment needed to mine the asteroids up into space would cost tens of millions of dollars but potentially more complex than bringing the mining equipment up is bringing the mined material back down to Earth. With current technology, the material would need to be transported in hundreds of loads and rockets down to Earth, or with massive parachutes. And keep in mind, this wouldn't be pure gold or platinum. Much of the mined mass would be silica and carbon. However, before any of that can be done, years, and likely hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, need to be invested into space mining to develop the technology and techniques necessary. So, let's assume you do manage to foot the massive costs and decide to head out and mine some asteroids. You might head for the asteroid Psyche 16, which is made mostly of gold and platinum and is estimated to be worth 10 quintillion dollars. You can't simply bring that back and become the richest person in the world by several orders of magnitude. First of all, that 10 quintillion dollars 
is with current gold and platinum prices. Those prices are dictated by the amount of supply and demand there is for the product. As demand goes up or supply decreases, price goes up. Similarly, as the demand goes down or supply goes up, the price increases. As I'm sure you can imagine, dumping 2.72 times 10 to the 19 kilograms of gold and platinum on earth would send the respective prices down the shit, well, you get the idea. To put that into perspective, only 2.5 million kilograms of gold and 150,000 kilograms of platinum were mined this year. Gold and platinum would cease to be precious metals anymore. That doesn't mean they would be useless. Platinum can still be made into catalytic converters, and gold still has the property that it does not rust. Nonetheless, Psych-16 will not be making any quintillionaires. No one is saying that it is impossible. As we've shown, it is physically possible, but not very economically feasible. If and when rocket launches and space travel become cheaper, asteroid mining will probably develop into a new industry. It may even make the world's first trillionaire, but due to the restrictions of the market, it certainly won't be making any quintillionaires. Anyway, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, and I will see you all soon with a brand new video.